In terms of male responsibility, I think we'll come on to our first little subheading of his quote. Um, he said, The commandment number one of the show is that it's always the man's fault. One of the steadfast principles of the show is it's always your fault. And it's because he believed that ma male nature is, is more rational. And this you can make the argument of, for example, when you look at the Sc Scandinavian studies, um, neuroticism and agreeableness are higher among female populations biologically. It might be because you're temperamentally inclined to care for babies, so you're more attuned to the fact that negative emotions and self-sacrifice is, is a necessary part of, of being a mother. And so if you're biologically attuned to that, you might, might be more concerned with social politics, more concerned with how you say something rather than what you say. And so he believed that because women do some things socially and instinctively, very much in the moment, um, they can become, he said, and this is this is going to be explosive, but women become abusive as soon as they get an in. As soon as you give them an inch, they take a mile. They can't help it. But you can't get mad about them. You can't hit them. You can't choke them. You can't yell at them. You have to be diligent until they get the option in their head. They have to think first, okay, am I getting ready to do something righteous or am I getting ready to do some drama just to get his attention because it's not worth what's going to happen? And what was going to happen, he always said, was... I will out-argue you. I will always out-rationalize you. I will tell you what was wrong with your behavior. I will walk you through your own wrongdoing. And then because you've inconvenienced me, now that I've gotten back to making myself happy, I can get back to making you happy because you haven't made it a burden for me to look after you. Because my dogs, they need me, right? But they don't act like they don't. girl needs me like my dogs need me, but she play me like I ain't sh What's fascinating there is that he's, he, was, he invented extreme ownership, which Jocko yeah. Willink takes Actually, credit for. That's it's always on. your fault. Yeah. Patrice was there years before. And the other thing that springs to mind there is um, the, he always wants to know the reason behind everything. Yeah. And he's saying that men always have to know that and they have to figure out what, what women's reason behind everything is. Mm. And he had this he had a strange example of, um, well, a strange example, but of the of the woman asking him to sleep on the other side of the bed. Do you yes. know this? Yes. She said to him like, which side of the bed do you want to sleep on? He goes, I don't know, this side. And she goes, well, then I can't see the TV. He's like, why did you ask me? Yeah, <laughs> it's because, and he always said, um, men have to audition the totality of their worth to a woman. So men, because women control sex and men control the relationship, the initial interaction is a man has to have, he, he had an exact quote, I've got it buried somewhere. He, they have to have their finances right. They have to have a nice uh, nice car or nice clothes, a nice job. They have to be well-groomed. They have to be, uh, be able to talk well. They have to be funny. They have to be intelligent. Whereas women, he said, basically just have to be smooth. Just have to be nice. pretty and nice, right? Yeah, yeah. And so that initial interaction means that women often aren't afraid of rejection. And this is this is borne out in the, there's a great study, um, little experiment, of where a woman would go up to a man on a college campus and say, would you like to come home with me tonight? And almost all the men said yes. But a man goes up to a woman on the college campus and says that, and they got turned down 100% of the time. Because the sexual risk is is greater, for example, you know, pregnancy, longer, etc. Whereas men can, to put it crudely, pump and dump. Um, what Tree said, therefore, is because women aren't used to rejection, baked into a lot of the questions they ask their man are presuppositions. They already know the answer to their own questions. So they'll go, oh, uh, what are you doing later? And Patrice, Patrice would go, well, I might not want to do what you want to do, but in my head, I'm just thinking what I am doing, not what answer you want. So you might just go, oh, nothing. And she goes, well, I might want to go to the movies. And he said, well, I might not want to go to the movies, but now I need to preempt exactly what the reason you're asking for me to something is because I want to say I, I want to go to the moon even though I can't just because I might not want to go to the movies with you but I might also not want to do anything at all whereas women often ask something like what side of the bed do you want to sleep on and they know what side they want to sleep on but they want you to have the thought first so they don't get rejected yeah well that's an amateur mistake you can't tell women you have a block of time that they could take up <laughs> <Yes>. potentially <laughs> never yeah. say nothing you say yeah. uh, uh, I've got you know, Keep it vague. Yeah. Well, he so the example he used about the the women um, doing something without the awareness of consequence was the GameStop story. I don't know if you've remembered this one, but it's he once went to GameStop with his girlfriend. He she dragged him around the mall all day looking at clothes shops, and he stopped into GameStop and spoke to the employee about the new Call of Duty, the new Madden, etc. And after a few minutes, girlfriend Von walks up to him and just goes, "Oh, all this shit chat." <laughs> now my girl did that sh talking to some mother f and I and she's in his face like let me tell you something I walked away 
She goes, whoa. She runs up to me, right? And goes, why would you do that? Well, why would you run? You know, he could have, uh, 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 uh. he could have what? They could have what? That dude could have punched you in your f***ing face. And you couldn't do shit about it except for look at me. So you're going to have to learn respect. It trickles down from me. The respect other men show you is at my behest as your protector. So please don't give me grief when I innately want to look after you, but don't make looking after you a chore. Don't just do things to get my attention. Don't just do things because they're in the moment. Try and be grateful for the fact that I can, I can do something for you. I want to do something for you, but just don't get in the way of me looking after you. Um, and then the more explosive thing he said, when I tell you shut the f up, it's giving you direction. <laughs> Which, that, that was... Wasn't there another one about when, you, when you're at a, a restaurant and the, you want to, like, you're saying yes. all my steaks on the cook, then you complain about it, and then the waiter comes over and, and you're wondering whether to say anything, but she chips in and says it for Yeah, you. he said, yeah, it was, uh, it was, let's say you go to a restaurant and you order steak and potatoes and you come up with, uh, steak and rice and you come up with potatoes and you go... Uh, no, no, I'm good. I don't want, I'm not bothered anything. I'll eat it. And then your girlfriend chimes in and goes, uh, excuse me. He didn't, he didn't order rice. Uh, he ordered rice. He didn't order potatoes. And he goes, don't lay claim to my plate. Like I can either decide that I will put up with it or, and he said, even if you think that you want to, you don't mind eating the potatoes, you should just speak up for the sake of doing it because she will see a need to, to speak on your behalf. And so even though she thinks she's doing the right thing, in the long term... You're emasculated. It's exactly. Over. She'll think she'll think she's slowly taking the lead in relationship, <laughs> despite... Because she doesn't want to take the lead. He's a, his, one of his famous phrases was, women don't want to win, they want a winner. They don't want to have to do everything. They don't want to be your mother. What they want is a man who can show them direction and make them happy. Look after them. And if she can do things for you, then why would she want you around and commit to you? Because why should she... In her mind, why should she be making you happy when you should be making her happy? Um, so that's, that's why he came on to his also more controversial phrase. Um, I'm better than you. <laughs> hey, that's also your catchphrase. Yeah, well, <laughs> true. Uh, there is, so he said, there is no 50, 50. A man must be able to always tell his woman I'm better than you. Um, so uh, there was a, there was this battle he had with Jeffrey, who is one of the, uh, Jeffrey Damia, I think his name is. No, no, that's no, a that's, that's a serial killer. Jeffrey Gurian, that's it. Very different fella. Um, and he said, oh, you know, Men need to cultivate things to overcome the innate power that women have over men. So, like the the fact that beauty can have like a medusa effect. If you if you walk up to a pretty woman, you get frozen, and it, in that moment when you're auditioning the totality of your worth, you fall flat. Um, that's why Patrice came up with, and I I don't really agree with the numbers scale, even though it's kind of off the cuff, but it's not precise. That's why he came up with the the new number scale, the one to zero 30. to thirty. Yeah. And his idea was rather than rating a one to ten, in your mind it resets the parameters of approaching a woman. So one to ten are unattractive women. Twenty, uh, ten to twenty are okay right. looking women. They right. Yeah, they are right looking women. And then twenty to thirty are fine looking women. And within that, you have a ten scale. So you might be able to approach. He said uh, the right amount of uh, arrogance, the right amount of confidence to approach a, a really high end all right looking woman <laughs> and then in your mind you're priming yourself for that it's it's not precise science, as well he did, he did class angelina jolie in her peak as a high-end all right looking woman yes so i don't know what the next the next level is like next, you know, that's well he he did he only he, to be fair he also did only date black women so that would probably <laughs> okay, exclude him okay. for yeah so he's he had his preferences to approach a woman in the street you have to have the right amount of arrogance and the right amount of humility you can't come up to a girl and go what's up there sugar clit and she'll go, what? Get out my f***ing face. And you can't go, hi, I was looking at you and from know, over across the street and I thought that you were beautiful. <laughs> she'll go, this pussy mother Dante said, initially, when you're younger, you do things to get women. But when you start to do it, you enjoy cultivating your personality. And that's what women find attractive. It's when it becomes not a routine to get women, it's when it becomes real. And what he actually is articulating there is Aristotle's continent man. Ah. Which is quite interesting because he wasn't directly saying it, but he was saying, okay, as a man, what you do is you, you fall into the false premise of living within the paradigm of female appeasement. Until you cultivate internal confidence, you aren't attractive to women because if women think they hold all the cards in your self-conception, they know that that can be knocked over by one loss. And what they want to do is constantly upgrade their protection. And so they want the man with the the most internal confidence that can make himself happy and make them happy. 
Therefore, don't do something because you think it's going to appease women because it's not going to be authentic. They use the term righteous. What you should do is do things because you enjoy them, because you know it's good for you, and then women will be attracted to you by default. And I think that's actually very sound, sensible advice. Um, he then spoke about fair trade, but not in the political sense. He said, I traded the entire uh, the implication of my entire existence for your vagina. Fair trade, thank you. I traded all the things that you think you're going to be with. I gave you, hey, I'm funny. I can read. I can write. I've got credit. I've got a nice house. And then you slept with me. Nice trade. Thank you, sweetie. What in there made me need to like you when you were trading your vagina for my existence? Why should I love you back? Now, now you need to get to work. Uh, now you need to work to get to the love you want. And this is his dichotomy of um, men will often get sex before women get love. And that's the old phrase of of women trade sex to get love, and men trade love to get sex. But it's the idea that because women time gate sex and men time gate relationships, and because men are auditioning more to get the sex than women are auditioning to get the relationship, then uh, he said, what was it? Um, women need to like you to sleep, uh, love you to uh, love you to sleep with you. Men need to love you to sleep with you again. And so, <laughs> which is brutal, but but the idea is basically that, that women cannot try and demand love of a man too rapidly, and they can't try and deny, uh, demand the same type of love. Because love for a man is often duty to look after a woman. He said, what was the thing? Oh, I need to call in sick from love. Because he said, this is a face of a man in love. <sighs> this is a man in love. Here's, here's the face of a man in love. <laughs> and it's because... You're duty bound to care for your woman, but sometimes it's exhausting, especially if she gives you shit for it. And the face of a woman in love is like, yay, yay, I'm in love. Whereas women, it's sunshine and rainbows and butterflies, and I feel all special. And it's because the men are doing more to attract the women in the first place, whereas the women being pretty and nice have, have had the attraction come to them. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.